Introducing uh, the UNRWA Commissioner General Philippe Lazzarini for a few words. And thank you for coming and very sorry we were a little bit late. Okay. So, good morning. As we speak, people in Gaza are dying. They are not only dying from bombs and strike. Soon, many more will die from the consequences of siege imposed on the Gaza Strip. Basic services are crumbling. Medicine is running out. Food and water are running out. The streets of Gaza have started overflowing with sewage. Gaza is on the brink of a massive health hazard at the risk of diseases are looming. A few days ago, I warned that we will not be able to continue our humanitarian operation if we do not get the fuel supply. My warning still stands. Over the last few days, UNRWA has drastically limited its consumption of fuel, but this came at a cost. Our team had to make tough decisions that no humanitarian workers should do. What needs more support? Bakeries, water station, life support machine in a hospital, all this needs fuel to function. The siege means that food, water and fuel, all basic commodities, are being used to collectively punish more than two million people, among them a majority of children and women. There have been intense negotiation and endless shuttle diplomacy to open a humanitarian supply line. So far, it has only resulted in a handful of aid convoy. This will not reverse the fact that Gaza is being strangled. The people of Gaza feel shunned, alienated and abandoned. Over the last week, I followed very closely the focus about the number of trucks entering in Gaza. Many of us saw in these trucks a glimmer of hope. This is, however, becoming a distraction. These few trucks are nothing more than a crumbs that will not make a difference for the two million people in the Strip. We should avoid conveying the message that few trucks a day means the siege is lifted for humanitarian aid. This is not true. The current system in place is geared to fail. What is needed is meaningful and uninterrupted aid flow. And to succeed, we need an humanitarian ceasefire to ensure this aid reaches those in need. This should not be too much to ask. Civilians are already paid a staggering price. More than one million people displaced, entire neighborhood flattened, thousands killed, thousands more injured, with almost no access to hospitals anymore. And all this under our daily and constant watch. Every day is also becoming a sad day for the United Nations and UNRWA, as the number of our colleagues killed is increasing. Today, at least 57 colleagues of mine are confirmed killed. In one day, we had confirmation that 15 were killed. And these are mothers, fathers, wonderful people who have just dedicated their life to their communities. And if they were not in Gaza, they could have been your neighbor. One of our colleagues two days ago died while he was going to the bakery to pick bread. He left six children behind, six displaced children in shelter. And meanwhile, we have thousands of UNRWA colleagues who, despite the fact they share the same loss, fear and daily struggle of millions of Gazan, put on the UN vest and go to work. They are, for me, the true heroes. Our teams are also the ones going to the border late at night with this 
few trucks. And uh, after having waited for a day to get approval and clearances until it is completed. And they carry boxes, offload, download trucks uh, in the dark while bombardment, bombardment and aerial strikes are taking place. My colleagues are the face of humanity during what I would describe one of the darkest hours. But you know, they also absorb the anxiety and the anger of all those displaced in Ulwa shelter. They are taking, my colleagues, the heat as the community, understandably, are angry, hungry, and frustrated. We are almost three weeks in this war, and people are turning their despair to UNRWA. This is normal. We are the face of the international community, the same international community which seems to have uh, turned its back to the Gazan. And it pains me that humanitarian aid, a very basic right for people, is constantly questioned, while at the same time, despair is live streamed under our watch. My colleagues in Gaza report that the last remaining public services are collapsing. Our aid operation is crumbling. And for the first time ever, they report that now people are hungry. Civil order is collapsing and anger starts to be channeled towards my colleagues. How long can we last? I don't know, but certainly no, no more than a few days. Let me also say that many argue that aid cannot enter because of aid diversion. Let me be clear. We have solid monitoring mechanism. UNRWA is a direct provider of assistance to people in need. All our vendors and partners are vetted against the sanction list. We give aid to those who need it most. Our convoys are notified and deconflicted. UNRWA does not and will not divert any humanitarian aid into the wrong hands. Finally, you have heard our calls and repeated calls for the rule of wars to be applied to this war too. It means to apply the international humanitarian law means the application of the principle of proportionality and distinction. Civilians have to be spared. Hospitals, schools, UN premises hosting hundreds of thousands of displaced people seeking safety have to be respected. To do so, we need also, and here I think, uh, for, for me it's an important point, we need also to see the human face of Gazan civilian. To equal Gaza with Hamas is a very dangerous and misleading. It is an equation aimed at dehumanizing people, aimed at making the unjustifiable justifiable. Keeping our humanity means showing that the people in Gaza deserve our empathy and our compassion. No one can claim I did not know, as images, footages and voices of unspeakable suffering continue to come out by the hour from Gaza. We cannot anymore turn a blind eye to this human tragedy. Millions of people are asking, especially in this region, especially in Gaza, why does the world not have the will to act and put an end to this hell on earth? They deserve an answer. Delaying it will deepen the polarization in this region and increase the risk of spillover. Finally, 
As Commissioner General, I intend to visit Gaza to express solidarity and amplify the voices of the communities and of our staff. Gaza is the place where I almost started my career 30 years ago, and this is where I feel I need to be. Thank you.